Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to prove that the formula for finding the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Alright, we want to show that this is correct. To carry out our proof, we will use calculus. Now, let's start with the drawing and then everything will be much, much clearer. So we have something that doesn't really look like a circle, but it is not a circle. It is a sphere, all right? This is a sphere, even though this looks 2D because we are on a computer screen, computer screen. It looks 2D, but it is 3D, all right? It is a sphere, not a circle. So the sphere will have a radius that is R. And we want to find the volume of the sphere. How could we approach this? Well, one of the best ways of approaching this, at least one of the best ways that I know of, is choosing circular plates along the, along the sphere. And I am really not happy with this. Come on, let's make this a lot prettier. So, it is... All right, this is better, I guess. So we will choose circular surfaces. For example, this one, well, that one will be like this if we look from the top. The top view will be like that. And since this is a circle, this will have a radius. And that radius will not be the radius of the sphere. And you can see that from the picture. If we choose the circular plate from the middle of the sphere, well, then the radiuses are the same. However, we don't need to do that. Okay, so we will perhaps call this, well, actually, let's do it like this. Let's call the little case R capital R, so that this becomes R cubed, then capital R cubed. And let's call this one little r, all right? So capital R is the radius of the sphere, Small case R is the radius of a circular plate that we choose. Now we have this circular plate and we will have, uh, we will choose it such that this has a very, very tiny and infinitesimal, uh, what do you call it? Width. So it will have a width, an infinitesimal, <laughs> an infinitesimal width. And that width I will call dy. As I said, this is infinitesimal. That's why we have the differential in front of y. Now, we're going great. But now I want to do a nice, a nice geometry argument. And let's do it with green, maybe. I like green. So let me do it like this. This will be R, of course, because it is the radius. I am going to define this distance from the center of the sphere to the surface of the circular plate to the center of the surface. And this will be 90 degrees then. This will be Y. And of course, this distance then is R, the radius of the circular, circular pl plate. Now, from the Pythagorean theorem, we know that r squared is equal to y squared plus little r squared. And I have a video about the derivation of the Pythagorean theorem. You can access that from the cards right now, also from the descriptions part. Now, with that being said, now I want to solve this for y. So, when I do that, let's see what we get. We will see, we will say then, we will say y squared is equal to r squared minus little r squared. All right, cool. But what is the point? The point is like this. Since I want to find the volume of the whole sphere, I will use an integral. Because integrals are very helpful while finding areas and volumes. So let's say that the volume is equal to an integral. 
and I will uh, talk about the boundaries in a minute. But let's now focus on the inside. The inside will be the so think of it like this: you have a melon, okay, a watermelon, and then when you have that watermelon, you are slicing pieces like this, slicing them. As you can see, when the slight sliced pieces are are put on top of one another, they will form the watermelon again, right? That means if we add all the infinitesimal volumes of these slices, we will get the whole volume. So what would the uh, what would the expression be using an infinitesimal? area section, an infinitesimal circle, well, it will be the circular area, which is pi r squared, and I also have a video where I derive pi r squared, you can find it from the cards, also from the descriptions part, so it is pi r squared, the area of the circle, times dy, the width, to give an infinitesimal volume, all right, so far so good, I hope so, so we write pi r squared dy. And I actually noticed that uh, for the green part, we shouldn't have solved it for y squared. Let's erase that. Let's solve it for r squared. That was a mistake. Excuse me for that. So r squared is equal to r squared minus y squared. Cool. Now we can continue. Huh, what about the boundaries? The boundaries, since we want to calculate the whole volume, will be from negative r to r. Because think of it like this. When this guy, y, extends all the way up to here, it will be at the value negative r. Right? right? I make the assumption that we set the coordinate system like this, x, y. So downwards is negative r. And when it comes all the way up here, this point will be r. And when we do that, when we take the integral from negative r to r, we will cover all the volume so that we will get a formula for finding the volume. Now, we want to take this integral. Negative r, r. Pi r squared. Well, we can substitute for r squared. It is right here. We have pi, and actually we can take pi out of the integral sign. It is just a constant, pi. So what is r squared? It is capital R squared minus y squared. And we have the dy here. We are allowed to break this integral into two integrals. Well, actually, do I want to do that? Let's do that. Why not? So if we do it, we will have pi. The integral negative r to r, r squared dy minus integral negative r, r, y squared dy. And close the brackets. Continuing on, let's find the first integral. Well, we have pi. And the first integral will be, we will raise the power. Oh, we won't raise the power. No, look at that. We have r squared. We will just put y next to it because... The power is y raised to the power of 0. We add 1, divide by the new power. So we in fact get from the first integral r squared y minus from the second integral we will get, we will raise the power now. It will be y cubed divided by the new power. Divide by 3. And we can put the boundaries, each integral have the same boundaries, that's why I denoted it with a one evaluation bar. And is it correct though, to do it like that? Well, yeah, it is correct, why not? So we got this, and now we are allowed to substitute them. Let's do it. We have pi. When we put r for y, we will get r cubed minus r cubed divided by 3. 
And then a minus. This minus is incredibly important. I want to even change the color. This is so important. This comes from the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is incredibly important. All right. We have the minus. And now we are substituting negative r. When we do that, we have r squared times negative r. So it is r cubed with a negative. Then we have the minus. We have the minus. So, well, let's even put the brackets here as well. This is getting confusing, but I hope you are able to follow it. So we are substituting negative r here now. That will give, we had the negative, so negative r cubed divided by 3. All right. Well, what happens then? What happens then? Let's see. We will see what happens. So, first of all, these become positives. And if we open the parentheses, distribute the negative sign, we will have pi... We have r cubed minus minus r cubed. So minus a negative r cubed. That will be 2r cubed. When we add it with the first r cubed. And then minus 2r cubed divided by 3. If we arrange the denominator of the first one, we can say it is 6 divided by 3. That is just 2 still, which gives pi. 6 minus 2, that is 3, I mean, that is 4, divided by 3, r cubed, let's rearrange it a little, to get 4 divided by 3, pi r cubed. And that is the formula we stated at the beginning to find the volume of a sphere. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please add them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then. Take care.